It seems there were two Irishmen, Pat and Mike, who were married to two fine sisters, Susie and Sally, each as pretty as a picture and as much alike as two peas in a pod. They are the daughters of Timothy and Molly, the former of whom had a great talent for conversation. It seems that the lot of them, as we make their acquaintance, are some thousand miles distant from their hometown of Camellia Corners, Connecticut. It's the first leg of a cross-country vacation trip to the West Coast. What's important to us is the fact that they're making the trip in two brand new automobiles. Pat owns a DeSoto Fireflight and Mike a Buick Super. At the moment, however, Timothy is delivering a lecture on his artistic preferences. Tim is self-educated and really quite an authority on a great many things. He is ready and very, very willing to deliver a 15-minute dissertation on any subject you'll listen to. So it's no surprise to Molly when he says, eh, The Greeks had a word for it, Molly. Symmetros. In English, it's symmetry. Now, you consider all the parts of a thing, and if they're harmoniously interrelated, you have a symmetrical form, perfectly proportioned. Everything that belongs, nothing that doesn't belong. Now, to give you another example, take a look at that DeSoto of Pat's. It's pointed toward the West Coast, and uh, that's where it's going, of course. But if you see what I mean, it looks as if it's going there, all of it, right now, even standing still. Look at the roof line, the hood line, the rear deck line, all going forward. And so is the corner post. What's the corner post? The post that supports the roof at the front. You see how it's gracefully swept back, both at the top and the bottom? Now then, look along that hood line. See how it slopes forward, sort of tapers down like the nose of a jet plane cut in the wind? And, uh, by the by, that's just what it does. Now then, look over here at Mike's Buick. Notice how the nose is squared off. Sort of boxy, isn't it? Now, Timothy, Mike's Buick is a nice car. Who's talking about Mike's Buick? I'm talking about the meaning of the harmonious, symmetrical form and artistic composition. For example, now, the vertical corner post of this car might be considered harmonious with the two vertical lines formed by the chopped off front and rear. But in no sense can they be said to harmonize with the horizontal lines of the hood and the roof. It may be, of course, that the designer was purposely trying to achieve an angular, boxy form. But apparently, still another designer, with a fondness for the curved form, decided what the Buick really needed was a glaring, dipping strip of chrome, which hasn't much relation to either vertical lines or horizontal lines. And so we're inclined to agree with Tim that the harmonious, symmetrical form must be something other than a conglomeration of unrelated curves and sharp angles. If Tim were a salesman selling the idea of owning DeSoto style, he'd probably mention the flowing character line formed in the body metal and accented by the sweeping lines of chrome. That's one of the distinctions that add to a man's pride of ownership. But now, westward ho! Yesterday, Tim drove Pat's DeSoto. But today, for the first time, Tim will drive Mike's Buick. He's been warned by his wife, Molly, that comparisons are odious. And so he says nothing about the lack of ample lap room between the steering wheel and the seat of the Buick, as compared to the comfortable amount of room provided in the DeSoto. But if a man can't talk, at least he can have music. Wait, wait, don't, don't turn on the radio. Well, what's the matter, Mike? You got a bomb rigged up there? No, Dad, no bomb. It's my fault. I should have told you. You see, right here on page two of the Buick Owner's Guide, under Automatic Starting System, it says, Caution. It is possible to damage certain parts of the radio if the starter is engaged while the radio is on. As an added precaution, do not attempt to start the engine unless the radio is off. The radio switch may be turned on after the engine is running. Oh, is that so? Well, let's skip the music, Mike, so I can concentrate on getting used to the way this car works. Eh, let me see now. Buick still has the... I mean, it's got the accelerator pedal starting operation, hasn't it? Eh. Well, okay, here we go. 
If a man can neither talk nor have music, Tim figures at least there's no law against thinking. And so he's thinking that in the DeSoto he drove yesterday, a man can turn on the radio anytime he pleases, whether the engine's running or not, because all the accessories cut out automatically when you engage the starter. As far as starting the DeSoto engine is concerned, it takes just one twist of the ignition key. None of this old-fashioned accelerator pedal business like in the Buick. But Tim is driving the Buick now, and it tends to make the best of it. And so, out onto the highway, which hasn't a bend in it as far as the eye can see, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day. And there's a large hunk of sunshine bouncing right off the Buick instrument panel. Kind of hard on the eyes. But far be it from Timothy to mention that in Pat's DeSoto, there's a glare-free instrument panel. No use mentioning that the DeSoto instruments are easier to read, either. Somewhat rough on a brilliant conversationalist, not being allowed to talk. So it was several hours before Timothy thought it would be safe to inquire about Mike's reasons for not having his Buick equipped with power steering and then pretend to share his point of view. I uh, suppose you figured Susie doesn't drive much anyway. And of course, you're not exactly a uh, weakling, are you, Mike? <laughs> After all, a penny saved is a penny earned. And then too, Mike. What are you talking about, Dad? This Buick has power steering. It kicks in when you make a sharp turn or when you park. Oh, 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 I, I, I see. Well, now, that, that, that's, that's real handy, Mike. I was just thinking that on this straightaway, it feels like conventional steering. Uh, but like you say... Jim! It... Jim, why don't you turn the radio on now? Maybe you and Mike could listen to a nice football game. That's a great idea. Uh, what do you say, Mike? It's up! It's good! And there goes the gun, the game's over. It seems the powerful Pottsville High School team just wouldn't be denied this afternoon. And folks, speaking of power, why don't you drop in at Pottsville Motor Sales, your friendly DeSoto Plymouth dealer, and ask for a demonstration of DeSoto full-time power steering. They'll prove to you that most power steering, as in car B, only helps you park or turn sharp corners. But did you know that 95% of your steering movements are fatiguing little corrections that must constantly be made even on the straightest of highways? And only DeSoto, only DeSoto full-time power steering helps you all the time, on that 95% as well as on the 5%. Yes, folks, stop in at Pottsville Motor Sales. They'll show you that you turn the DeSoto steering wheel only three and a half times to turn the front wheels from extreme left to extreme right. Car B requires 22% more hand action for the same front wheel action. Again, easier, faster steering in a DeSoto. Pottsville Motor Sales will demonstrate for you that DeSoto full-time power steering does four-fifths of the work for you all the time, whenever the engine is running. You'll be interested to know that Car B's power steering requires four to seven pounds of pressure on the steering wheel before power even begins to operate. So take a demonstration ride with a friendly Pottsville Motor Sales representative. And he'll prove to your complete satisfaction that DeSoto full-time power steering absorbs all road shocks. They're not transmitted to the steering wheel. It'll make you wonder, folks, why it is that in car B, road shocks transmit up to seven pounds of hand shock to the steering wheel. And that's the story. Until next week, this is station POTX in Pottsville, Nebraska, saying goodbye. Well, it seems that listening to the football game wasn't a very good idea. And Tim is desperately trying to think of some other subject for conversation. But at this embarrassing moment, he can only think of such things as better side visibility through the DeSoto true wraparound windshield than through the Buick semi wraparound windshield. Or DeSoto's constant speed electric windshield wipers, which are so much more dependable than Buick's unpredictable vacuum operated wipers. And now with the rheostat control, DeSoto's wipers are better than ever. Or the fact that although both cars now have tubeless tires,
which are much more blowout resistant, only DeSoto provides an extra safety factor with its safety rim wheels. Obviously, none of these topics are quite suitable for conversation just now. So perhaps the best thing to do is ask the operator to ease this situation by turning the record. Another day on the road. Mike left first in the Buick. Timothy hung around a bit so he could ride in the DeSoto. Today, he'd like to relax and engage in his favorite sport, conversation. Yes, sir, you got a real smart automobile here, Pat. Aside from looking good, there's quite a few other things I like about it. For instance, you take this flight control lever. It's simple to operate, and you don't have to fool around with a park position like in Mike's Buick. Well, of course, you don't need a park position, Dad. DeSoto's got a very powerful independent parking brake. In the Buick, the parking brake depends on the main braking system. Oh, don't even mention the Buick parking brake. I got a mite careless releasing it the other day, Pat. Uh, you know how you do it. Well, sir, it caught me right smack on the shin. Well, after that happened, Mike told me to use the park position on the selector quadrant. And you know what, Pat? He whipped out that owner's guide of his again and read me what it said. On the page six, I think it was. It says, this parking lock must never be applied when the car is in motion. Now, if I understand it right, I guess that means you can damage the transmission if the car is moved while the control lever is in park position. Now, I ask you, Pat, what is a man supposed to do if somebody gives his Buick a push while it's parked? Sue for damages, I suppose, if you can catch the guy red-handed. Now, that's enough of that kind of talk, Tim. But I must say, Sally, I do like these wide door openings on your car. I was just noticing that their shape is different. And I suppose that's why it's so much easier to get in and out than in Mike's car. And this armrest, it's, well, it's actually restful because they've put it in the very place I'd normally rest my arm. In Mike's car, the armrest is, well, it's so awkward and uncomfortable. Not restful at all. And of course, Mike's car doesn't have these chrome handles to help me get out. I do think they're both nice cars, though. So Molly and Tim enjoy the scenery. Until several hours later, Molly says... You know, I've just thought of something. Yes? Yesterday, in Mike's car, I was squirming around so much. You know, trying to relax my shoulders. And I could feel my old back trouble again. But there's something about these seats that's just right for riding. They're higher. Or more firm. Or maybe it's because this car doesn't bounce around so much. Uh, you should feel the difference from the front seat. This car don't feel like the rear end is trying to break loose all the time. Uh, I guess that new Buick still has the old coil springs at the rear. Whatever it is, I'm glad we don't have to make the whole trip in the Buick. Of course, they're both nice cars. And so we have the point of view of a family diplomat. This car is much more comfortable than Mike's car, but they're both nice cars. <laughs> In Nebulous Valley, in the great and sovereign state of Nevada, there's a filling station whose proprietor is an avid reader. And since the only books in his library are automotive data books, service manuals, and owner's guides, the chance customer, pausing long enough to buy a tank full of gasoline, would hazard the guess that here is an authority on automotive matters. Such a guess would be correct. Well, mister, I ran out of premium gas. But since you're driving a 1955 DeSoto, I see no harm in filling her all the way up with regular. Half an hour ago, there was a fella here that, uh... Yes, ma'am. Restrooms is right around there. As I was saying, there was a fella in here about a half an hour ago in a 1955 Buick Super. And I had to absolutely and positively refuse to fill her up. The fella was parked at this exact self-same identical pump as you're parked at. And I told him I couldn't take the responsibility. Well, when I told him I would only let him have three gallons of regular, he took it real personal. 
so he says to me, You're crazy. I can't get to Las Vegas on three gallons of gas. You're a darn tootin' you can't. But you can get to Stunted Pine Pass. They got premium gasoline there. That's all you can use in this car. Now listen, it says right here my owner's guide. Most gasolines will perform satisfactorily, but in some cases, such as high temperatures or carbon accumulations, a premium gasoline will produce less detonation or spark wrap. Normal detonation or spark wrap is not harmful. Well, mister, I know that's what it says in your Buick owner's manual, but I'd be derelict in my duty if I didn't tell you there ain't no such thing as normal detonation or spark wrap, even if it didn't hurt the engine. It'd drive you out of your mind. So, three gallons is all you get. Boy, was he mad. You know, spark wrap ain't normal in this DeSoto, but on them other engines, well, I've seen pistons that was cracked by detonation. Well, now, I'm glad you told him that. That's something he ought to know about. Uh, while you were talking to him, did you tell him that, that those carbon accumulations that Buick talks about can cause a 10% power loss in just a few thousand miles? And uh, you could have told him that in DeSoto's combustion chambers, there'll be no carbon accumulations because there aren't any pockets or corners where carbon can collect. And that's why there's no pinging or power loss. Or uh, you could have mentioned that with DeSoto's resistor type spark plugs, the initial gap setting can be the most efficient one and that there's no need to allow for wear. And that the built-in resistor minimizes ignition interference with the radio. And that Buick uses ordinary spark plugs. Well, mister, there wasn't enough time to tell him those things. But if he'd been around long enough, there's a, a lot of things I could have told him. For instance, he ought to look out for clogged and frozen fuel lines. The Buick fuel filter is clear up in the engine where it won't protect them fuel lines at all. Uh, well, if he, if he didn't wait for that, I guess you didn't get a chance to tell him that the DeSoto fuel filter is in the gas tank, where it can screen out dirt and water before they can do any damage. Or that Buick engines use a fixed oil intake, so that when the oil level is low, it draws foam into the oil lines, which means that not enough oil gets to the bearings. But that every DeSoto engine has a floating oil intake which draws the cleanest oil from just below the surface so that no foam or sediment can enter the DeSoto oil lines. Nope, didn't have time to tell him that. Mister, if you run into that feller, I wish you'd tell him all them things. And something else I wish you'd tell him, especially if he's gonna be driving around these hills. Keep on his toes about them Buick power brakes. If the power should ever cut off, they ain't got half the reserve pedal travel these DeSoto power brakes got. In this car, if you ever lose the power, stopping is just about as easy as with the standard service brakes. And one more thing. You'll have trouble with the Buick fixed cowl ventilator being always open on the outside so it can get clogged up by snow or slush. She'll collect dust in the summer, too, and it'll come whooshing in when he opens the ventilator inside. But with the DeSoto cowl ventilator, it opens and closes on the outside as much or as little as you want. Yeah, well, I'll sure tell him all those things. And somehow I have a feeling I will run into him. Well, <clears throat> it's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. In fact, it's a pleasure just being allowed to talk. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine, mister. And you tell that feller one more thing. Tell him the next time he buys a car, he ought to talk to a DeSoto dealer so he can get all the facts on why DeSoto's a better buy than Buick for 55, for 56, for 57, for 58, for 59. And that's the story of Tim, the eloquent Irishman from Camellia Corners, Connecticut, and what he found out on the road to Carmel, California. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more.